guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new here. We are filming a sit down, hang out, chit chat style, get ready with me today. I'm going to be putting on my skincare and my makeup and chatting through some things that I want to update you guys on slash things that you have asked me about in my personal life. So I'm going to be giving you an update on Elsie, which side note, I have to say, I love that you guys are loving her cameos in my videos. I wanted to make sure that I was like sprinkling her in because I know puppies make everyone happy happy, but I never want it to feel distracting. So I'm glad that you guys are loving those. And I also am obsessed with the fact that you call her the baby. So many of you have left that comment, like get the baby this, do this with the baby. And I feel like that should just be her name, the baby. I'm also going to be updating you on a certification that I'm going to be getting in the hair education space, my physical health, because a lot of you did have questions after my last life update, my mental health and some cosmetic procedures that I may or may not have had done in the past couple weeks. All right, let's jump into it. Let's start off with a little update on Elsie. So I realized that in the video when I introduced her, part of the footage got cut out where I told you guys her name and her breed and all of that. So one of the comments actually on the video was like, wait, what's her name? Is it pumpkin? Is it sugar? Is it baby? Cause I called her all those things. So as most of you know, from my Instagram, her name is Elsie and she is a mix between a Cavalier King Charles Spaniel and a poodle, but Something I found out from one of you guys actually is that only 5% of that breed have a straight coat like she does. And most other Cavapoos have a curly or a wavy coat. So that's why she doesn't look like a traditional Cavapoo. I am obsessed with the way she looks. She is so, 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 so cute. But I originally just loved that Cavapoo breed and that's what I had wanted because I had seen photos and videos of Cavapoos that have that that red really wavy coat and I always thought that that was so beautiful and I had just heard great things about the breed as well from like a behavioral standpoint so that's why I was originally looking for Cavapoos but then when I saw photos of her I was like oh my god I need her I need a little healing ointment balm well it's not called any of those things it's the La Roche-Posay Cicaplast balm Need it around my brows because I just got them microbladed last week and they are in that flaking phase, but I can't get this on my brows. I gotta keep those dry. Anyway, and size wise, for those that asked, I have no idea how big she's going to get. Her parents were 11 and 13 pounds and she is already 13 pounds, maybe even a little bit bigger. We have a vet appointment tomorrow, so I'll find out. No! Got it on my brow. So she's already bigger than both of her parents and she's four and a half months old. No, she's almost five months old. So I have no idea how big she'll get. We will see. But I am obsessed with her. I love her so, 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 so much. I'm so glad that I got her. She just, she's the best. She's so freaking cute and sweet and affectionate and I love it. The only thing that upsets me about her is that when she wants to like fully take a nap and go to sleep, she likes her alone time for that, which I get. But Instead of like snuggling up next to me, she'll go and lay on the hardwood floor in front of my bookcase, which is like across the couch. She's made that like her nap spot. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm the one who brought you into this world. What do you think you're doing over there? So I do wish that she was a little bit more snuggly, but she's so affectionate. She loves everybody, everyone she sees and meets. She is immediately so, so excited and kissing them and gosh, and overall, I would say it still has been going really good with her. She's very well behaved. She definitely is a dog that wants to please and like wants to be a good girl, which is so cute. So she responds to corrections really well, but it still is exhausting. Like even though she's a pretty well behaved puppy, she still is a puppy. So she just constantly needs attention and stimulation. And mom is tired. And something that has been torturing me over the past few weeks is that she no longer has interest in any of the long lasting chew treats that she used to really love. So the like dental chews and just things that last longer and are intended to keep them preoccupied. She used to love those and would like go to town on them for at least an hour, which would just give me like a little bit 
a little bit of breathing room so I could get some work done and just like not be distracted by her. But she's decided that she doesn't care about them anymore, which means that the only thing that she's interested in is me and playing with me. And like I said, mom is tired. So it's just definitely been hair somewhere. A lot of work from that standpoint because I just like don't really get a second to breathe or like I said like sit and do work where I don't feel like I have to be playing with her in some way but it has definitely been worth it because like I said I'm obsessed with her and she's the cutest thing I've ever laid my eyes on and I kiss her about seven million times a day and I just can't freaking get enough. Something I am super excited to update you guys on is the fact that I have officially enrolled to get my certification. That's not how I want to say that. I am enrolled officially to become a certified trichologist. That is something that I've been thinking about for a long time. This summer, I really started to look into different education options because as those of you that have been around for a while know, I really, really love researching the science behind the beauty that I talk about. I love learning about hair science. I purchase and read textbooks about hair science in my own spare time and making sure that I am continuing to educate myself is so, so important to me because I want to make sure that I'm giving you guys the most accurate information possible so that my videos are as helpful and informative and accurate as possible. So I have looked into a lot of different options to just kind of like get some official education in the hair space added to my title. Originally, I was looking into getting a cosmetic chemistry degree, but that is such a long program and commitment. And I don't know, it just felt like a lot to take on right now, given everything that I have been through over the past several months. I'm really, really, really trying hard to be careful about managing my stress levels and being mindful about how much I take on because in the past it was like, oh, I have an idea, even if it's going to take so much time and add, you know, hours of work to my plate each week, I'm doing it. I'll do anything to like further my career. But after everything that went down with my physical and mental health back in November, I just know that I need to be really careful about making sure that I am not adding too much to my plate like I have for the past, well, 28 years of my life. 28 and a half now, actually. So I felt like becoming a certified trichologist was a better, more manageable place for me to start because it is a completely self-taught and self-guided, led, paced. That's what I was trying to say. It's a self-paced program, so I can go at my own pace. And if there's a week where I just feel too overwhelmed with everything going on with work, then I don't have to, I don't have to study. I don't have to read my textbooks. I don't have to listen to the lecture. I can push it to the next week or the next week. So that was something that was really, appealing to me about this program. And it's crazy to think about the fact that I'm 28 and a half years old and I'm looking into all of these different education options because I did not go to school for any of this stuff. If you don't know this about me, I went to the University of Wisconsin-Madison. <sighs> I love that school so much. It has such a special place in my heart. And I was in the business school there, so I got a marketing degree. And I would say that there are definitely things that I learned from that degree that have been helpful in my career now. Oh, hello. Say hi to everybody, but don't wake off my makeup. I love you so much. I love you so, so much. Do you want to take a nap on my lap? You need to sleep. You've been up since 5.30 and you haven't napped yet which is a problem there. Oh yeah, so there are definitely things that I learned from that degree that have been helpful to my job now and just thinking about how I market my videos and my content, but I did not go to school for what my content is about. And of course I wish I had, like, you know, I just never knew that this was going to be my future. So you don't know what you don't know. So I am super excited to just get deeper into studying for the program so that I can share with you guys as I Go, even though it's really funny because I was looking at the syllabus and just all the different topics and so many of the things in the program are things that I have already taught myself and really looked into. So I'll be curious to see how much overlap there is in this course compared to what I have done in my own free time. But yeah, I will definitely share with you guys as I go if there are really interesting things that I feel like 
would be helpful for you guys to know. I can definitely make videos along the way, just kind of like teaching what I have learned. Did I forget to put concealer on? I definitely did. Did I? No, I did. Um, I mean, it honestly doesn't look that bad. I think I can just leave it. Like I can see my discoloration a little bit, but okay. So yeah, I just wanted to make sure I let you guys know that I will be a certified trichologist likely within the next year, which is just so exciting for the future of my content. And I'm really excited to be able to help you guys in an even more meaningful way. And after I get that certification, I may decide to start doing some hair care consultations for you guys because I get so, so many DMs and comments and questions and messages and everything. I'm gonna try really, really hard to take the approach of slow and steady wins the race with that and not try to just like, you know, hammer through it in six months, which is something that I normally would have done in the past. Cause I just get really excited about new things like that. And I'm like, I just wanna, you know, do it all right now and learn everything right now. But I know that that would just add so much stress to my plate because I'm still filming all my videos for you guys here and on TikTok and doing everything else that this job requires of me. Plus trying to manage the added stress that a new puppy inevitably brings. Her new favorite thing is, okay. Her new favorite thing is smacking on doorstops like that whenever I'm not paying attention to her to get me to pay attention to her. <laughs> That gives you any idea of how this has been going. I feel like that is a good segue into the next thing I wanted to talk about, which is just a physical and mental health update. I will list my last life update below where I talked to you guys more about- Oh my gosh, y'all. Her favorite toys are lids or caps to my beauty products. So like, where did that just go? Something like this. My hair clips, my overnight heatless curling, devices. What do you even call those? Like the rods? She loves those. My sleepy tie, my scrunchies. She prefers all of those things to the thousands of actual dog toys that she has. And her favorite game to play with those toys is to grab them, shove them underneath the couch, and then cry to me that she can't get them out. <sighs> anyway, so again, I'll be sure to list that last life update below in case you missed it. Since that life update video, I have gotten, I guess, like further confirmation that physically I am 100% completely healthy, which is a huge relief. Again, I feel like it's maybe just like a little bit too personal to like dive into all of the symptoms I was experiencing, but the symptoms I was experiencing led me to be referred to a neurologist and I saw two different neurologists and one of them ordered an MRI of my brain and my spine. And I also got some other testing done with him too. So the initial testing that I did with him was back in Chicago and that came back like clear and good. And then he ordered the brain and spine MRI. And that's when I was like, <laughs> I am so out of here. Like I was not gonna do that being so far away from family that just like, that's that was my final straw. And thankfully he told me before that like it was his belief that everything I was experiencing was benign, but he's like, it's my job to just make sure that I'm being as thorough as possible so that everything is ruled out, which I really appreciated because the first neurologist that I went to just like immediately dismissed me the second he took a look at me. He's like, oh, what? You look like this young, healthy girl. Like, pfft. and that was really frustrating because everything I was experiencing was very real. You know, it's not like it was made up symptoms. So on the one hand, it was a relief to have somebody take what I was telling him seriously. On the other, it was obviously just very nerve wracking to then have to get that testing done and have him order an MRI of my brain and spine when I'm only 28. Like just things that I never thought I would have to be doing. So I did tell you guys in that last life update video that I was healthy. And even though I didn't 1000% know that to be true, I just felt like that was the case based on the initial test I took and based on that neurologist telling me he thought everything was fine. Um, but I still had to schedule those MRIs. So obviously that was something that was in the back of my head every day that I was nervous about. So it was the hugest relief, as I'm sure you can imagine, to get the results of those MRIs back and just have both of them be 100% clear and healthy and good with nothing concerning on either of them. But weirdly enough, while I still felt very relieved, part of me felt really frustrated because that confirmed 
what my worry was, which was that I don't really have any solid answers and there's nothing I can do to like treat what I'm dealing with. That second neurologist that I went to that took me a bit more seriously was like, you know, if everything comes back clear, just ignore it. I was like, great. So that is something that I feel like I've just been mentally trying to deal with and try to get better at accepting as time has gone on because I still am experiencing those things that originally led me to go to the doctor in the first place and get that neurologist referral. But like I was telling you guys in that last video, I feel very confident in saying that I know that all of this happened because of extreme chronic stress and burnout and fatigue and anxiety and just everything over the past like four to five years. So I know that now that I'm back here in Minnesota and I just feel like so much better about my living situation and being by family and so many more friends and I have Elsie and I'm just feeling so much better and happier. I know that all of this is gonna go away eventually and it's not gonna be something that I have to deal with forever, but it definitely has just been like a mental battle every day to wake up and be like, how is this my life? Like, how did all this happen? And I think the biggest thing that I've been trying to do is just remind myself of all of the things that I'm grateful for every day and make a conscious effort to feel happy for everything that I'm grateful for because I truly do have so much to be grateful for. So I will sit and remind myself of that every morning while I'm having coffee and just make a conscious effort to not allow myself to feel like a victim because of all of this. I think at first it was really easy Easy for me to do that because I was like now this like I just went through this like traumatic breakup situation I moved to Chicago which ended up being traumatic because I just was so unhappy there and now I'm having this health scare which turned into like a little mental health crisis like I just I really was feeling like a victim like oh my god like why am I the one that all of these things keeps happening to? Like, when am I gonna catch a break? But that's such a gross way to feel. And I I just, I don't wanna feel like a victim. I don't wanna be like, oh, poor me, this sucks. Cause that just makes you feel bad about yourself. And at the end of the day, I know that I'm healthy now. I have confirmation, I have tests that prove it. Great. And the things that I'm experiencing don't prevent me from doing anything in my life that I want to do. And for that, I feel so grateful because I know people go through things and have symptoms as a result of extreme stress that do cause them a lot of issues, like really, really severe pain that prevent them from working out or just like being able to sit comfortably. And I'm very lucky that none of this has prevented me from living my life in any way, except for like the mental blocks, if you will. So hopefully that helps to answer any of the questions that you guys may have had about that situation. I know that it was really vague and still is a little bit vague, but again, I feel like there's like some level of privacy that I need to keep with medical information. So that is what I wanted to share. And mentally I am doing 1 million percent better than where I was when all of this first started happening when I first started experiencing all of this and like got the referral to the neurologist, that is when my anxiety was at an all-time high and it was at a high that I had never experienced in my life. I was completely like disassociated, disconnected from reality. It, it was extreme and I could not be further from that place now. I feel clear mentally. I am not in a state of panic and anxiety every single day. I feel really, really good, aside from like the moments that I have, of course, where I'm like, oh, this is so frustrating. I just want this to stop. Aside from that, which I know is just like part of the process, I'm great, which feels so great to say. And if any of you are in a place right now where you are feeling severe, severe symptoms of anxiety and depression and you are struggling to function normally, maybe feeling some of those things that I felt, please seek professional help. I cannot stress that enough. I am so grateful to have the couple of close friends that I did back in Chicago because they really encouraged me to do that during that time when I like wasn't functioning, like I said. And I think when you're in such a heightened state of emotions like that, whether it be depression or anxiety or something else, it's super difficult to see and think clearly and you really need people that can help to do that for you. So they really encouraged me to do that and I'm so grateful for that and grateful that I did because that really helped me. So don't be embarrassed by that. There's nothing wrong with asking for help. 
it's so important if you're feeling that way. Therapy's cool, medication's cool, doctors are cool. Whatever you need to do to get yourself feeling back to normal and feeling like yourself again is the right decision and something you 1000% should do. Now that we talked about that, let's wrap up with something a little bit more light and fun, which is my makeover week. So uh, I told you guys already that I got my eyebrows microbladed last week. I got three different things done that I was super excited about. The brows, after I filmed my last like kind of makeup tutorial where I just showed you guys how I like to apply makeup, I was complaining about my brows like I have a million times before. And a lot of you were like, why don't you change the shape of your brows? I was like, you guys, I can't. There's literally nothing there. Like I can't. But a lot of you commented like, you should get your brows microbladed or nanobladed um, and just talked about how it was the best thing you ever did. So I was like, you're right, I should. And I found an amazing brow artist here in Minneapolis. I will link her account below. She, I believe, is Brows by Morgan on Instagram. I saw a lot of comments actually on her account like, I travel all the way from Wisconsin to see her. It's so worth it, stuff like that. So I was like, okay, I know that she's the one I wanna go see. So I got my brows nanobladed, which is basically just like a smaller version of microblading. And she confirmed everything that I hated about my brows. She's like, yeah, you have a bald spot here. Your brows really are not even at all. They're super asymmetrical. This one's completely different than this one. I, you know, all the things that I knew already that confirmed that I needed to get that done. So I got that done. If you're not familiar with microblading or nanoblading, it just takes time for them to heal. It's not like immediate right away and then you're good to go. So you go through like a phase of them being irritated and then they'll flake off and fade and then they come back to life and then you get your touch up. So I'm in the period right now where the color has like dulled a lot and kind of faded and I'm waiting for them to like reemerge. It's so interesting how that works. But I'm already super excited about them. So even though, you know, there's like nothing here, I'm already super excited about them and know that this is going to be such a game changer in my life because I won't have to fill in my brows for like the next two years and that is something that I've literally always wanted to be able to do. Unfortunately, I cannot fix how this looks because I'm not allowed to get my brows wet or put makeup on them for 10 days after I get them done, so I have to leave them in this video. The other thing I got done are my nails. So I told you guys on my Instagram stories, I was like, remember how I said I was never gonna get my nails done ever again? Cause I put that in a video, like things I'll never do again. And I think I specifically said acrylics because every time that I've gotten acrylics in the past, they just completely destroy my nails. It takes forever for them to grow back out and look healthy again. Um, so I was like, I know I said I was never gonna get my nails done again, but I feel like I have to because I keep ripping them off and I just like need to stop and I need to break the habit. And a lot of you responded and were like, get hard gel on your nails. It has changed my life. It's made my nails so healthy and strong. It's so much better than acrylic. It looks more natural. So I was like, say no more. So I also found an amazing nail artist here in Minnesota. Her name is Siri. I will list her account below as well. And she did such a good job on them. This is what's called velvet nails. So they like shift in color. So they'll look really, really like sparkly and amazing, but then shift to just look like brown. See that? <sighs> And look at just how flat and perfect these are from the side. They're so beautiful versus regular acrylics, which just tend to look like chunky and uneven from the side. The side profile is fabulous. And funny how this timing works out because the last thing I got done are my lips. Let me put this lipstick on first. Oh my God, this lip color. So this was a little bit spur of the moment. I've never been like self-conscious about my lips or anything like that. But as you guys know, I am obsessed, but every time I bought a new lip product, I feel like I was always a little bit disappointed when I put it on because it never looked like the photos that I saw or the videos that I saw. Like once I put it on my own lips, I was always like, oh, well, this isn't quite the same. And that was mainly because my top lip was just smaller than my bottom lip. I've always had just like a naturally relatively full bottom lip. I mean, not like as full as you'll see online, but that always was good. The issue is just that my top lip was smaller and then when I smiled, 
it, you know, like went in even further, curled under. I just decided that I wanted to have a full on makeover week and like make myself up so that I felt glam and like a little bit fun and different, you know? That's always fun to do. So I made an appointment and was able to get in pretty quickly to get lip filler. And she put almost all of it in my top lip. There was a little bit left of the syringe that she just put on like the sides of my bottom lip to even it out. But most of my bottom lip is still exactly the same as it was before. So I got these done um, a week and two days ago now, and it takes about two full weeks for them to settle. Well, I think she said maybe it takes like a month for them to feel like they'll feel, but at that two week mark, all of the swelling should be gone. So my top lip is still a little bit swollen. And if they haven't already gone up, I have two videos where it looks a little bit more swollen than this. So I was like, I have to make sure that I address it so people aren't like, what did you do? So yeah, um, if you're curious, the type of filler I got is called Restylane Kiss. And that is meant for those that want a more natural look. I told her, I was like, I don't have any interest in having like the really huge full Instagram lips. I don't want that. I don't feel like that would look good on me. I just want a little bit more fullness on the top and I want it to look as natural as possible. So she recommended Restyle and Kiss. And yeah, I feel like when I signed up for the appointment, I forgot about the fact that it was going to require needles. So I just wasn't really prepared for that. Like obviously, duh, but I just wasn't thinking about that. I was just like, ooh, this is gonna be fun and exciting. And I think because of that, it hurt so much more than I was expecting. I was laying there while she was doing it and my eyes were literally just dripping, streaming water down the sides. Cause I was like, oh my gosh, this hurts. But now that it's done and I am almost fully healed, I'm so excited I did it. You know, just spice things up sometimes. I still have absolutely no interest in getting filler in my face. Mark my words, I do not want filler in my face. I'm just like too scared about it migrating and not looking right. So the lips I feel good with, but that's where it's gonna stop. All right, you guys, those are all of the topics that I wanted to address in today's video. I really hope that you enjoyed getting ready with me and just, yeah, had fun hanging out today. Let me know in the comments below. What should I have you let me know? Let me know how you're feeling today or how you've been feeling lately. I really hope that you guys are doing all right. And thank you again for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, if you haven't already, click on that notification bell and send my channel to a friend. Thank you so much for your, so much, that was weird. Thank you so much for your support in doing those things. It really does mean so much to me. I love the freaking heck out of you. Make sure to stay tuned for my next video because that will be up in a few days. But until then, I hope you have a great few days. Good girl. Do you have any final words, Elsie? Okay. Bye.